I wish you guys could smell my apartment right now. I just made banana muffins and <sighs> it smells glorious. I was trying to figure out an interesting video for today and remembered I still had to finish charting out my necklines and sleeves for my cable rib sweater, which I mentioned in a previous video. So I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone? I'm going to walk you through how I chart out my sweater patterns. Hi, I'm Lynn. Welcome to my channel. Join me on my journey as I sew, knit, and crack my way through my stash, exploring creative possibilities and stretching my imagination to fulfill my stash's potential and bring it to life. I think I started this sweater back last October and dragged my feet on it when I got to the necklines because I couldn't decide what kind of neckline I wanted. Was it going to be a V-neck? Was it going to be a turtleneck? I didn't know. And then I became more interested in home decorating projects, so this sweater has just been sitting on the back burner waiting for me. Now, I credit this book, The Knitter's Guide to Sweater Design by Carmen Michelson and Mary Ann Davis for taking the mystery out of sweater design. Before that, I really hadn't taken the time to analyze what made up a pattern, but after charting out my first um, sweater, I realized just how easy it was. And as of this recording, there are still used copies on Amazon, but some of them are pretty pricey. When I bought this book in 1989, it was $29.95. Um, I saw one on Amazon for 28 bucks, and then it just went up from there. The next one I think was 45, then there was one at 60, and there was even one for $85. Now there are more recent books out on how to chart sweaters, but this one is still my favorite. I think it just hands down makes everything very easy and uncomplicated. I also have this notebook to record all my designs, but you don't need anything fancy. A composition book or a spiral notebook will work um, just as well. I just happen to have an affinity for blank notebooks, so I have a lot of them. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to die with as many blank notebooks as I have with my yarn stash. It just, it just seems to be one of my obsessions. Anyway, this is a nice one because it has um, space for all of the particulars of your project. I mean, it's designed specifically for knitting, um, but you could use it for crocheting also. So there's sections in it for um, your project name. You can punch a hole in it and put your yarn, a sample of your yarn in there. You have a spot for putting your swatch in. You have um, places to put your, um, the brand of yarn, what its weight is, how many balls you have, what your needle sizes you're using, any embellishments that you possibly need, as well as your stitch and your row gauge. Um, I use this book to design the sweater that I am currently wearing. You can see there, got everything all down. And the nice thing about this, too, is it has these graph pages on it, as well as pages for your, to write out your pattern. I use these pages more for keeping track of my rows, because all my pattern information, I can knit the sweater straight from my little chart over here. But this is an, another nice feature of this book is back here it shows you how to take measurements. So if you're knitting for yourself or somebody else and standard measurements. So if you wanted to um, get into pattern design as a profession, you can see what the standard measurements are and work from those. And it also has other different yarn information. So it's a nice little book to keep everything all in one place. And I've used it for a lot of my designs. Um, and now I have to find where I put my pattern. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. 
I'm back on track. It's been a long day, you guys. What can I say? Now, because I also design a lot of my own sweaters, I created a template using my particular measurements. So I have my bust, my waist, my hip measurements, with what my standard armhole depth is, my shoulder length. I didn't put my neck edge on here, which tends, I think is about seven inches, but it still works out. And um, how, what my length, I like my sweaters. I don't, I'm short-waisted. So my waist, my jeans do not come up to my waist. And if I was to knit a sweater that ended at my waist, I would have all this flesh showing. Now there's nothing wrong with my flesh, but I still like to keep it covered. I'm just more comfortable that way. So I like to make sure that my sweaters are long enough to go past the hem of my jeans or pants or whatever I'm wearing. I do have some sweaters that I've made to wear with particular objects that, um, like a skirt that I have. So the skirt does sit at my waist, so the sweater does come to my waist. It doesn't come lower. But anyway, this is a nice template to have because not only does it help me when I'm designing my own sweaters, but it's also nice if I decide to work on any um, commercial patterns and I can compare my measurements to their measurements to see if I want to make any adjustments to the pattern. Now I want to emphasize that this is not a tutorial but I do want you to know that designing and charting your own sweaters is not hard and basically here are the steps that I go through. So the first thing I do is decide on what I want to make. In this case of my cabled rib sweater I knew I wanted to make a roomy sweater and now I've decided on a v-neck because I have a shirt that I can wear underneath it. I put waist shaping into a lot of my sweaters. I did it on this sweater. You probably can't even see it, but, but I didn't include it in this sweater because the nature of the cabled rib stitch pattern makes the knit extra stretchy. So it will be form-fitting without the knee to add shaping at the waist. And also note that I have not blocked this yet. So while it looks small, it will be blocked out. It will work. So once I decide on what I want to make, I make a drawing of it. And this is what my drawings look like. I, I have other things filled in here yet that I'll go over. But basically, I just make a drawing of what my sweater looks like and I add in all my measurements. So I know I want this sweater to be um, 17 inches wide. I'm making it in two pieces. So each, the front and the back, I want them each to be 17 inches wide. I know that I want the length from the hem to my armhole to be 16 and a half inches. I know I want my armhole depth to be eight inches. And I know that I want my shoulder width to be three inches. Um, now, I chart out my designs a little bit differently than other people, and I use this method because I used to own knitting machines, so my notation style evolved from knitting patterns specifically for the machine. Basically, all my instructions for this sweater are in this graphic, so I don't need to write out step-by-step -step directions. I can look at this and know exactly what I'm supposed to do for my armhole shaping. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do for my neckline shaping. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do for everything. Um, these other pages are basically, I just keep track of the rows. I do like to keep track of row counts because that way I can make sure that when I'm seaming it up, when I'm working flat, that I have the correct number of stitches on each side. Now, another thing that you want to keep in mind when you're charting out your designs like this is I decided I'm doing a v-neck. Now, you have to take into consideration the band that you will be adding on afterwards. So I made my shoulder width shorter than my actual shoulders. And the reason for this is because I know I'm going to be adding on an additional inch with my neck band. So that is why 
I have decreased my shoulder width. And these are things that you have to think about when you are charting out your design. So are there going to be any additions? Are you going to be making any button bands? Are you going to be making any, any um, collars or um, ribbing that's going to be taking up more space? If there's one thing I hate in a garment, I hate a garment that does not cover my bra straps or that I have to keep pulling up. So I don't like when the neckline is too wide. And I also don't like it when it's too narrow. So it, when I'm making a V-neck, I want the V-neck to sit on my shoulders. I don't want it crawling up the, um, whoops. I don't want it crawling up my neck unless that is a particular feature that I've, I intentionally put in there. You know, I mean, it, you can have a, a neckline that hugs your neck, and that would be a very beautiful feature, but if that's what you want. But keep these things in mind while you're charting out your graph. Then the next thing that I do is I make a gauge swatch. Of course, you just got to figure out what your stitch and row gauge are. And for my particular garment, it's six and a half inches, um, six and a half stitches per inch, and 7.69 rows per, per inch. And yes, I do... I do add the fractions in there. And then after I have my swatch, then I can go back in and plug in the numbers or do the math to find out what my calculations are going to be for this garment. And I want you to remember also that knitting is a very forgiving medium. So you don't have to be precise, which is one of the reasons why I am so precise with my stitch and row gauge, because I would rather have those be precise and then kind of decide on the back end if I get a fraction whether I want to go up or whether I want to go down or what I want to do. Also remember that if you're using a particular stitch pattern that has a repeat, for instance, on this sweater my stitch pattern has a 10 stitch repeat plus two stitches because I added those plus two stitches because I like my salvage edges to be knit because I use a mattress stitch when I am sewing together my, um, my sides. So I would just prefer to have a clean stitch rather than try to figure out how to do, how to mattress stitch purl stitches and that sort of thing. I mean, I, I'm sure you can do it, but you know what, I'm lazy and I would just prefer to have a stockinette or a knit stitch there to seam it all up with my mattress stitch and make it all easy. So, um, so when you have a stitch pattern that has a particular repeat, if you want it to look balanced, then you may have to add stitches here or there. For instance, I want my the sweater to be 17 inches wide. So if you take 17 times my row gauge, which is six and a half stitches per inch, I get 110.5 stitches. Now, first of all, you can't do half a stitch. So you would either go up or down. But I also know that my stitch pattern has a 10 stitch repeat plus two stitches. So with 110 stitches, I would have 11 repeats, but I wouldn't have those two extra stitches. So I just rounded it up to 112 stitches and cast on 112 stitches for my, for my um, body. Now, like I said before, this is not a tutorial, so I'm not going to go through each thing, but I do want to show you how I came up with my neck edge because that was one of the purposes was, of this video was to figure that out so I can finish these sweaters because I probably just have a week's worth of work in them if I just got to it and I could have it done out of my way and be on to the next project because quite truthfully having all these projects hanging over my head just drives me crazy. So <laughs> rant over. So my neck, my neck edge. I decided that I do want to do a v-neck on this. This obviously is going to be the back piece because I've, I've already, I'm already well into my armhole here. But this piece will be the front because I just, I literally just bound off the six stitches for my sleeve shaping, uh, um, for my armhole shaping, sorry. So I like to start my v-necks at the same time as my armhole shaping. So this, this is the perfect place to begin. So what, what do I need to know to do this? Well, I know 
that I have made bind offs and decreases for my armhole shaping. I also know that my shoulders are going to be three inches. So I want, when I'm done with all my V neck and armhole shaping, I want there to be three inches of stitches left on my needles. And I also know that I want my armhole depth to be eight inches. So this is what we, we have and what, where I came from. So I know that I started off with 112 stitches. I cast on. So on each armhole edge, I bound off six stitches and then I decreased another six stitches. So that means I decreased 12 stitches on each end edge for my armhole shaping. So 112 minus 24 stitches gives me 88 stitches and I have 88 stitches left on my needle. Now I know that after my v-neck shaping that I need to have um, three inches of stitches for my shoulder. And if you multiply three times your stitch gauge, I get 19 and a half stitches. I just rounded it up to 20 just to be on the, on the side. So what I know now is that my 88 stitches minus my 20 sti stitches for each, each shoulder, which is 40 stitches, means that I have 48 stitches left on my needle to decrease for my V-neck. So I know that it's two-sided. So if we divide 48 by two, we get 24 stitches. So that means on each side of my V-neck, I'm going to need to decrease 24 stitches to get to my 20 stitches at my shoulder. Now, how many rows do I need to decrease these stitches over? Well, I know that my armhole is going to be eight inches. This is one, one of the reasons why I like starting my V-neck at my um, armhole shaping because it, it just all works out. Not only is it a good placement for the V-neck, but also it's just easier to figure out. So if I have eight inches times my 7.69 rows per inch, I have 61.52 rows. So I just rounded that up to 62 rows. So that means I have 62 rows that I have to decrease um, 24 stitches for each side, right? So that gives me 2.58. So what do you do with that? Well, guess what? We got this handy dandy little book which will tell us exactly what to do with that. There is this wonderful formula in here. It's called the taper formula. And obviously if I had divided my stitches into my row and came out with an even number, I'd be I'd be good as gold, but I didn't. I came out with a fraction. And so in this formula, it even has in here, if your result is an even number and a fraction, go to step three, even. Um, if your result is an odd number or an odd number and a fraction, go to step three, odd number. So what this is doing in this taper formula, and I'm not gonna go through it Again, I, this is not a tutorial, but what this taper formula does is when you have an even or an odd number like this, it shows you how many stitches you'll be decreasing, you know, this many rows and how many stitches you'll be decreasing Y number of rows. So in this case with my neckline, what this formula told me is that I'm going to need to decrease one stitch each neck edge every other row 17 times. And then I'm going to decrease one stitch each neck edge every four rows seven times. And another nice little thing about this book is it gives this chart right here. So it shows you 
how your tapers will look. If you want a more of a straight taper, you're going to be alternating between the every other row and every four rows. If I want my um, taper to be more convex, I'm going to be doing all my um, decreases every four rows first and then every other row. And if I want my taper to be more concave, I'm going to be decreasing every other row first and then every four rows later. I want my taper to be fairly straight because this is a neck, because it's a neckline edge. And that's, that's the beauty of this book. It has all this in here for you to figure out like, okay, how do I, you know, this is what you get, but what happens if you do this? I, I love this book. I can't sing enough praises about this book. Um, other areas, like if you got your taper and it resulted in one plus a fraction, what this would mean is that you would need to make multiple decreases in one row each side. So this happened when I charted my sleeve. I did not have enough rows to cover all the stitches I needed to decrease for. So this meant that I needed to decrease two stitches on each edge every other row four times and one stitch each edge every other row 15 times to accommodate for the fact that I had more stitches to decrease than I had rows to accommodate for. And a good book like this is what will help you. I mean, not that you couldn't figure these things out on your own, but I just don't want to use the brain power to do it. So a good book like this will help you figure those things out. And if you're intimidated by this math, trust me, if I can do this, you can do this because I'm no math whiz. Although I will say this, one thing that this book taught me was that if I had a good geometry teacher back in high school who would have told me that I could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out how to chart a sleeve cap, then yeah, I would have been more interested in geometry than I was instead of them just using these random examples that had no pertinence to my life whatsoever. Anyway, that's just a whole nother rant. But if you're not into or you find this math kind of intimidating, like I said, it really isn't. But if you think it is, it doesn't mean you still can't design your own sweaters. You know, maybe you don't start out with a set in sleeve if you think that is too much. Start out by doing a drop shoulder, which requires no armhole shaping whatsoever. I mean, basically you can knit a sweater out of four rectangles and still have a really nice functional sweater. And I just say, start doing something and slowly branch out into, okay, I'll try a v-neck now, or maybe I'll put some gathers in my sleeve, or maybe I'll do this, you know? You can slowly build up those skills, but when you have the right tools, it makes it so much easier. So please give yourself the opportunity to try it. And I hope that this encouraged you to design your own knits and give it a go. I'm sure if you can't even find these books that there are formulas on the internet that um, that are out there and ways to do it. I mean, we have such a wealth of information around us now. I just like using my books because I was born before the internet. <laughs> a long time before the internet. So my reliance on it is perhaps not as big as some other people's reliance. Anyway, that's my process. Please share in the comments um, what you have learned and what challenges and successes you've had in designing your own sweaters. And if you want to show me pictures, I would love that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to follow me on my journey, hit subscribe and the bell to receive notifications when a new video is up. And you can also follow along on my blog. Links are down below. Happy distashing. See you in the next one. Bye.